This week, Snohomish County business owners who have struggled to stay in business due to criminal activity in their neighborhoods thank the Snohomish County Sheriff's Office for conducting their third Operation Clean Streets since December 2021. What's up, Snohomies? Bo here with your weekly dose of news. Don't forget to like and share this video to support independent local journalism. Before we get to our main story, here's what you missed last week. An eruption of applause greeted Beth Marriott when she walked through the doors of Meadowdale High School's Great Hall. While sporting her school spirit with a Meadowdale Mavericks hockey jersey, she was inducted into the Washington Activity Coordinators Association Hall of Fame last Thursday. One by one, students and administration took to the podium to share their appreciation. Behind them, unicorns decorated the stage to represent the quote, life is rainbows and unicorns, even in the toughest times. A quote that Principal David Shockley says describes the approach Marriott continues to bring as the school's athletic director and ASB advisor. On Tuesday, February 22nd, PETA, the largest animal rights organization in the world, called upon Seattle Police Chief Adrian Diaz, requesting an investigation of the University of Washington's National Primate Research Center concerning allegations of destroying videos and photographs of primates used for experimentation. The Linwood Times has reached out to the University of Washington to address these allegations, so be on the lookout for a follow-up report in the coming weeks. Here's some good news for Muckleteo residents. As you may have noticed, a few of the most recent city council meetings haven't been available to view on the city's website. But as of Thursday, February 23rd, the city's technical difficulties have been fixed. The city recently allocated almost $150,000 of American Rescue Plan Act funds in upgrades to audio-visual equipment in the council chambers, and many of these technical issues have since been resolved. This story is a bit older, but in case you missed it, the city of Linwood held a virtual open house for the upcoming Community Recovery Center, which will be built adjacent to the new Community Justice Center. The Community Recovery Center, or CRC, will provide resources and assistance to individuals with behavioral or mental health needs and will serve as a more appropriate place for people who need services not readily available at emergency rooms or jail. Before we jump into our main story, Snohomish County Executive Dave Somers issued the following statements to residents regarding the latest military action against Ukraine by the Russian Federation. Quote, the Ukrainian community in Snohomish County and across the world should know that we stand in solidarity with them, their freedoms, and their right to determine their own government. We will do all we can to support Ukrainians living in the Puget Sound region and any who may come to join them. The courage of Ukrainians in the face of this naked aggression is beyond inspiring." End quote. On February 24th, the Snohomish County Sheriff's Office conducted its third Operation Clean Streets since December 2021, after listening to local business owners share how their shops have struggled to stay afloat amidst circulating crime. Operation Clean Streets is a collaboration with the Sheriff's Office, Snohomish County's Office of Neighborhoods, and various county task forces. Operation Clean Streets has two main objectives, to stop criminal activity affecting businesses and communities, and to get help for those in need who are willing to accept it. Their problems mean something to us, and that, that's, that's really why we're here. We're here to make the quality, to improve the quality of life for these people, not just for, for, for their their employees, but for the patrons that visit their businesses. So really appreciate all you guys coming out. Wednesday's operation involved more than 50 deputies, three social workers, and a canine unit, and is part of an ongoing effort to help businesses and communities that are just south of Everett. The specific area of emphasized patrol starts west of I-5 on 128th Street and follows up Airport Way to Highway 99. And even though deputies have patrolled this area for years, these new operations are in large part thanks to local business leaders who have voiced their concerns. Businesses, uh, we're really seeing an uptick in uh, a lot of crime, uh, a lot of drug activity, a lot of transient activity, There's a lot of people that, you know, are just I think struggling out there. A number of months ago, it, it, it really was getting to a point where businesses were saying, you know, we, we're just not gonna survive if we're gonna continue to have to struggle with, with uh, 
uh, the problems that, w that we're seeing right now. Businesses in the area have been struggling with everything from car prowls to finding drug paraphernalia right outside their doors, and many of them have decided to close shop as a result. In fact, the deputies met up on Wednesday in an empty building that used to be a bank, but due to repeated instances of theft and robbery, the bank has long since closed. And the criminal activity in the area is especially concerning considering there are multiple daycares in the vicinity. Also, daycare uh, businesses that are in, in the park have been dealing with uh, people using drugs just on the outside of the play areas. Defecation around the area, people going to the bathroom in front of, you know, outside of the players while the kids are there. Uh, the whole range of things. And all of this led business leaders like Tyler Johnson, the property manager of Mariner Square Owners Association, to meet with the sheriff back in fall of 2021 to share with law enforcement the struggles facing businesses in the area. The, the daycare story was particularly impactful to me, where they show up very early because it's daycare and, and the parents in our community in this area need to get their kids so they can go work, make a living for their family. That means a lot to me. What the business owners relayed to us during that meeting was how hard it is when they show up to work and there is either a, uh, we'll say a homeless person, someone in, in, you know, could be someone in need in our community and that's fine, we can get them the help but how that impacts their business. You know, hearing these stories, it kind of almost not, it made it on a more personal level for me is what it did. And I got to see that, you know, these people, they're out here, they take the risk in our society by starting a business. You know, that's risky no matter what, you don't know if it's going to work or not. And then the other concern, which was just as important, was they're not equipped to deal with this stuff. That is what we are here for, not just we law enforcement. This is a group effort. And, you know, I, when I say we, I mean the government. When our communities ask for this type of help or relay those concerns to us, I think we should listen. So I listened. I think we got a pretty decent plan together. I'm not going to say it's going to solve all the world's problems. I'm saying we got to do something to help. That's what we are trying to do here. And one of the benefits of Operation Clean Streets is that additional services and resources are immediately available for individuals who are willing to accept them. We're here to enforce the law, but that's not the only thing we're doing, okay? If we come across someone, let's say they've committed a criminal act against the community in this area, but they want to get help that day, we've got all of that arranged ahead of time. We have people out on the streets right now ready to get people services if they want it. And to express their gratitude, local businesses supplied participants of Operation Clean Street with heaps of food, including some spare snacks from one of the daycares. I appreciated that the, uh, Sheriff Fortney was so quick uh, to have his office get back in touch with us, and they came out to meet with us. And, um, you know, our message was really, look, it's, we're not blaming anybody. We're, we're sort of recognizing that as a community, we really all have to pull together. Be on the lookout next week where we report the progress of Operation Clean Streets on LinwoodTimes.com. And here's what to look for this next week. The public has been invited to attend the unveiling of a new sign honoring our local veterans. The ceremony will be held at 1 p.m. Monday, March 7th at the intersection of 200th Street and 44th Avenue. Marysville Parks, Culture and Recreation will be hosting a Shamrock Walk family scavenger hunt from March 4th through the 28th. Entry is $5 per family. Prize basket winners will be announced March 31st. Prizes are valued at approximately $40. Registration is required, so go to marysvillewa.gov for more information. We wanted to do a sweet, nice conclusion to the show today, so what you're about to see is 10 seconds from a food review I did last week at Zuri's Donuts in Linwood, Washington. <laughs> All right, that's it for the news today. See you next week. <laughs>